Hello, my name is Na Ajele and thank you for inviting me um, on this podcast. Uh, Today I'm going to speak about the connection between my heritage um, and also my form of herbalism that I intend to practice. Um, And I say intend to practice because I am currently a herbal student, but I have been a researcher of my culture, which is specifically the Gadengmi, um, which is an ethnic group in Ghana um, made up of the Ga people and the Dangbi people. Uh, So I've been researching them for many years, I would say at least 15 years. Um, as a result of me being born outside of my home country, specifically the UK, and wanting to discover more about my heritage. And as I began to do so, I realised some many very powerful things that can inform my actions and enable me to live uh, a better life. And when I decided to make that decision to become a herbalist, I realised that there wasn't It was a very good pairing, if you want to put it that way. It enhanced my path further into the embodying of my heritage and the culture. And the reason why I say that is because in my culture, um, nature is a foundation. It's intertwined and informs all that we do. our God, which we call Ata'ananyunmo, which is Father, Mother, God, works through nature, is nature, is part of that nature and is part of us. And we respect and acknowledge that um, and use it to enhance our lives. So some of the examples of how it's used is, for example, if we take um, a vow of silence Uh, We know this when somebody puts a leaf uh, in their mouth. So it was known, for example, if you wanted someone to deliver a message, if there was an important message in in certain aspects of society that you that had to be delivered to a specific person, you would put a leaf in the you tell the message, put the leaf in the person's mouth. They've taken that vow of silence and that leaf cannot be removed until they reach their destination. Um, A ritual is done and the leaf is taken out of their mouth and they can deliver their message. One of the other ways that nature is heavily, uh, you know, for example, one of the examples is that um, when someone dies, um, we don't always say, oh, the person is dead. We we use uh, a number of things. And one of those things is saying they went to pull a leaf and didn't come back. And that for me shows how much nature was part of our lives to the extent that the ability to no longer engage with it or return from engaging with it was a sign of someone leaving this part of their physical life, ending this part of their physical life. But one of the the things that has changed is that um, our priestesses and our priests played a, a, a huge role in providing herbal medicine in our culture. And because of their demonization by colonialists and the maintenance of that um, demonization by colonial mentalities, um, herbalism is not as much of at the forefront as I would like it to be. Um, but where I do see it being practiced, often the spiritual aspect of it is undermined or completely removed. And I find that this aspect is very important in describing the connection um, in the various healing modalities. So I would argue that herbalism is the art of using, being able to use the constituents of the plant, but also the spirit of the plant to communicate with humans. And that communication could be to heal, it could be to inform, or to make a vow that cannot be broken. So traditionally, the herbalists will learn from ancestors about the plants to use, but the plants themselves can also communicate that. So it's not uncommon to hear of stories of people who've dreamt of a particular medicine or would simply um, find like you might see someone who has an illness that you've never seen or heard of before or you're unsure and you would go to the forest. People will go to the forest and walk 
communicate with the plants and the plants will tell them, use me, use me in this way. And they'll come back with the exact medicine needed to deal with that illness. So my work um, with Trofanya, which is the name of my organisation, is part of that healing, but is also a form of activism. And I say that because the name Trofanya does not exactly, well, does not exist in my language. Um, And by that, I mean the word for herbalist is Trofache. And Trofache is literally medicine owner but che could also mean father so it's that that view of ownership between that you know the father being synonymous with ownership or the male aspect being synonymous with ownership and because of my culture always talking about balance I decided to create a new term and I didn't feel I was doing anything wrong because of how my culture speaks of feminine and male energy so I created the term chofanye which is medicine mother. And the image or the logo that I use in my, my um, what I'm doing in my work is of a priestess. And what I'm doing here is I am challenging the colonial mindsets that limit our culture to a set of random actions or actions purely for entertainment, actions that lack understanding. So if you look at some of my posts, you will find that um, there's lots about Gadangme culture and how our connection with nature is maintained. And what I I feel is that this connection can provide a solution to many of the issues that we face in the model, modern world. It can provide ideas of how we can tackle specific problems, but it's also to encourage um, my fellow um you know, Gadangme people, my fellow Africans, my fellow indigenous people or people whose culture has been historically demonized, uh, some inspiration in the sense that showcasing our heritage, showcasing our culture and highlighting the amazing things that our culture has to offer specifically as solutions to many of our modern um, issues and, you know, modern dramas, if you want to put it that way, but also in terms of the mindsets that we have that can define progression by the extent to which we can damage our environment. We talk about civilization, we talk about progress, and for some reason, nature and the maintenance of our environment doesn't seem to be part of that. And I feel like many of our indigenous cultures understand that nature is integral to our existence and therefore we cannot define civilization we cannot consider ourselves civilized and progressive if our very home is damaged in the fight for that progression that so-called progression that so-called civilization so um that is what i would like to say and uh, i hope you enjoyed this podcast if you want to find out more about the work that i am doing and will continue to do you can uh, visit uh, any of my social media challenge, uh, channels and Instagram is my main one. Um, and I'm also on YouTube and Facebook. And Chofanye, which is the name, is spelled T-S-O-F-A-N-Y-E. Thank you very much for listening.